Welcome to the Non Judge Metal Podcast. James McGruff here. Got Nick and Leo and the Angry Gordons back with us. And Carl Guthrie's here this week. Yeah. We went through last week talking about like what kind of gets you into metal and what sound pulls you in. And uh, during that discussion, some uh, different type of bands got brought up. Uh, one of the ones was Goblin Cock, where a joke was made. What is goblin metal, and how you don't immediately just dismiss it, but you ask the question, "Hey, what type of metal is that? Where? Do, what is goblin metal? Is it metal for goblins, or is it metal about goblins?" Well, this week we're going to get into themes and gimmicks. Earlier this week, Amon and Marth released a new video, and during the comments of this video, I, uh, I think it was uh, "The Way of Vikings" was a song. It was off an album from last year, Correct. and uh, during the comments of this, I kept reading people kept saying. Enough with the enough with the Viking metal, and I'm like, well, that's their whole gimmick. They are Viking metal. Uh, to to kind of sway away from that that far in your career kind of seems to make sense. I don't know. We we did bring up though when when a Monarch Moth first come out, they weren't strictly labeled as Viking metal. You know, it's it, it's kind of they they had a whole different sound and it was raw. You know, and it was it was pretty good too. It was one of the one of the bands I had recommended to me from oh, somebody. Yeah. And they were like, dude, it's heavy as fuck. You need to check this out. Absolutely. And then when you brought up the fact that it was Viking metal, it had been a while since I had really heard anything from them. I didn't know that they had pretty much developed a label. So maybe maybe when they're saying, all right, enough with the Viking metal, maybe I think what they're going for is just trying to get some more of that raw shit that they come out with those first few albums before they developed into that sound. And I'll seed you that point. My, uh, I guess my reasoning behind it, what, what shook me is, that, is uh, after recently seeing them, and I'm, I'm literally watching you know, a Viking one-on-one fight on stage as the guy yells at me from the bow of the ship holding a tankard in his hand, and I'm, I, I'm loving it. I love big production. Anything with theatrics, you, you know, you start throwing fire out on stage and the craziness. I, I, I'm huge on it, man. Uh, I love bands like 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 I've talked about Necro Goblicon, man. I love that uh, that uh, Goblin theme metal. Goblins from space here to find their sacred book. Uh, count me in. Uh, the Alestorm, man. The pirate metal. It, it, it's it's the combination of my favorite music in sea shanties. What's not to love about it? <laughs> so it just got me thinking about different gimmicks um, and, and, and like what what gets you into it, man. And I, I personally, I love the theatrics. It's always been a big thing for me, man, just the whole spectacle of it all. Uh, but gimmicks don't just mean theatrics. They're not necessarily if you have a nice stage set or if you sing about a specific thing. Slipknot, a very popular metal band from our generation, man, they came out with the mask, and the mask was part of their thing. That was one of the first things, I'm sure, to you guys pulled you in. You see that, and you go, whoa, who are these guys? And you check it out. That you know, It kind of fits that, that, that teenage angst and rage. It went right into that era. Honestly, the masks are cool. You know, it had some... Mystic about oh we've never seen their faces and plus we were in high school which so it's like none of us really knew just to look these people up but uh, honestly it was the drumming that pulled me in for Slipknot that that was the fastest drumming I had heard they ever, just at first you know fucking kicked ass like you know? god day like when they when they when I first heard of my a buddy from Pennsylvania got me this album was like hey man I saw this album it says Slipknot it looks kind of crazy it looks like it's something you'd like. Popped it on, man. It just fucking, like, up to that point, I was listening to, like, Korn, uh, just kind of gotten into Fear Factory, and then I heard Slipknot. I was like, fuck everything else. I was like, <laughs> everything else is just needing to fucking get their game up to par. But did, when you saw them th- for the first time with those masks, did the gimmick do anything for you? Yeah, I mean, well, with Slipknot, I, when you look at a band, it, it, I think the gimmick thing should start off as like, okay, this is an approach we're going to take, but... I think for bands that make gimmicks work, it's really just a foundation. Like, this is a principle that we're going to add to. I mean, it, it gives you a little bit of, um, I don't know, allure because it's it's mysterious. You don't see the faces. Like, yeah, I get that. It's it's kind of like a, you know, I, I, mysterious. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's mysterious, but it's like badass. It's like, you don't need to see my face. I see your face. And because you can't see my face shouldn't matter. It's just like, I'm here to fucking kick ass. Are you with me? Yeah, it's almost esoteric. Like, yeah. You just want to get into it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's kind of like Mushroom Head. We, <laughs> exactly. We, we, we were watching some Mushroom Head Mushroom and, and, last night, and we watched a brand new video, and it's like, you know, they've got a unique sound, 
And the first time I ever heard them, I didn't know shit that they, they, they damn near looked almost exactly like Slipknot was going for. They definitely had their own yeah. unique stuff going on, but at, at two quick glances, you might not tell a, a huge difference from, you know, the a, a average group, person, a yeah. The group photo. But, uh, Speaking of Mushroom Head, uh, the Angry's been deceptively uh, um, getting rage filled over there and quiet. So, yeah, Mushroom Head, man, you, you're a little bit of a fan of those guys, right? I would say that. Um, I wouldn't. I would say that a lot of people like Mushroom Head just because of their masks. Yeah. Um, their new album, I wouldn't even really call that metal. I didn't know uh, that. Slipknot is, has always been one of my favorites. Uh, I think a mask has been one of those reasons. Uh, a band I want to talk about there is Avatar. Avatar. Oh, my goodness, dude. Avatar. Uh, one of the best few bands I've probably heard in the past few years, man. I'm I'm absolutely on point with him, and I love these guys. I've, I've only heard of them. That is a, another great show. I want to call them Circus Metal. <laughs> circus Metal. Dude, it's something else. Really? I, I mean, yeah, to, it's to some else. point, you know, I'm wondering, it's like, if you can hit a subgenre for any of these new bands coming out, like, that almost makes it all into theme metal. And if you really want to break it down, like, even some bands that you wouldn't even consider part of being theme metal, if you want to think about it, like Nile, you know, they're heavy as fuck, but yeah. all their shit is off Egyptian chords and based off Egyptian, like, you know, sacrifices and rituals and shit like that. Well, so. see, that's cool, man, and that's why I wanted to get you guys' opinion on this, too, and I wanted to hear more, because when I was reading the comments on this Amon and Marth video, and I'm... You know, of course, I'm checking it out. I'm a fan of those guys. I'm seeing people like enough with the gimmicks. You know, we don't need the gimmicks in the metal. And I'm like, well, why not? It's like why it, can't there? Why can't they coexist? I, 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 obviously, I'm going to be biased on them. I, you know, I'm, I'm big on the gimmick metal. I'm big on anything. Like I feel like theatrical. sometimes if people don't understand it, it's a gimmick. But if you do understand it, you realize it's inspiration. You know, any I mean, just the slight bit of thing, uh, the slightest bit of difference, I think, can almost label it a gimmick. Like people for a while thought that rap metal was a gimmick and. While, you know, I'm not going to say I'm the biggest fan of it in the world, there are some bands I like, and I don't think it's a gimmick at all. I think that it's just another corner of this genre. Now, drone metal. Is that a gimmick? A little detail on it. Give me a little detail. Did anybody? No? Explain drone metal. Um, 30, 40, maybe to an hour long of just, like, noise no, thank you. induced. Okay, like, you, you sit there and... It, it takes you through different emotions, starting off with like confusion, then impatience. Is then, it heavy? Then, then like nausea. I mean, is it heavy? I, I mean, uh, what what, what it depends on what your <laughs> definition of heavy is. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, I would say it's heavy just because like it, you know, after so long of it, I think you just want to put a drill through your head, you know. And it's not because it's bad; it's just because like it's, uh, it's married it's, man's metal. It's drone metal. Married man's metal. Like, 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 <laughs> Like, seriously, Justin, next time you're sitting there, like, listen to some of, some of that and, and get it in your head, and next time you're getting yelled at by your lady, just picture that going on, and it's like, yeah, that's that's what's really happening, you know, and I mean, like, it, for talent-wise, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's, it's, uh... It's, it, it's going to take. I mean, it's it's pretty intense. Remember, remember, I mean, dude, I can listen to some long songs. When, when, I love the I love the BT band. Like doom metal, right? And the, they're sitting there just like. Dah, 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 dah. In comparison to the video game. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but it, yeah, it's just you know thirty minutes of the same droning. Like a lot <coughs> of that doom and drone and uh, noise metal. I, I, I heard so many different subgenres about it. It's, it really they all kind of fall into the same thing. Right, but once you go over nine points. minutes, unless you got some kind of free bird type of like <laughs> solo and like everything to it, and I know that's a different genre to it, but like I'm, nine I'm minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and say real quick, free bird. I know. <laughs> I, but, do, but although frequently requested at some metal shows, true. ironically, uh, yeah. But I will say like, but that that you know, it's all it's all opinion, you know, because I mean, yeah, what yeah, they do that for profiling purposes. They want to see who's going to throw their hands up and be like, yeah, and kick his ass. In the yeah, head. get that guy out of here. <laughs> so uh, like when Saliva, not Saliva, like Drown a Pool played White Wedding, I shouldn't have went crazy and shit. Did they meddle it out? Did they meddle it out? 
Yeah. Well, then it, it, that's okay. Okay. Absolutely. I don't look. I don't like Disturbed, but I remember when the first time I seen them, I think they played a cover of Shout, and I believe it was like actually on one of their albums. Yeah. Never been a fan of those guys. Just gonna be yeah. judgmental yeah. right yeah. off the cover there. Not a fan of. I uh, know. I mean, not a fan. Can, of, not a fan you of. You can Disturbed. say you're not a fan of them, but you're not saying that they're not metal. Yeah, well, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying all those guys suck. Don't listen to them. I'm saying you know, that, just to me, I've never liked that Disturbed sound. But when they played that Shout at, uh, when I watched them at Ozfest, I was like, oh, that's. That's cool. That's clever, you know. I mean, it they, got people pumped up. People who might not have known who they were I, were, yeah, were, were I can dancing appreciate and getting them into for, it. For yeah. bridging other people to metal because they <clears throat> they've gone a bit more like a mainstream route. I think I've heard them do songs on like three different movie soundtracks. Sound, song yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's kind of like disturbed. It's I like the bass player of uh, disturbed while I was taking a pee at the urinal. Uh, it's a good story. Did you guys hold hands? Uh, almost full dicks. Oh, I almost did it, just to say, you know. I mean, uh, at least no, I, was, I was taking a leak. And, uh, Ghostbusters I mean, taught us anything. You don't cross it's the It's kind of hard to, to miss that guy next to you. You know, he's got dreadlocks down to his ass. And, you know, you, you can tell it to him. I was like, oh, shit, I know you. So, you know, I had a conversation while I was taking a piss with the bass player disturbed. But, hey, I got to meet him, you know. Hey, you know. One in a, one in, in the men's room, in a very manly way. way. Yeah. I'll say that's that's a. Yeah, man I feel like we yeah. shared a moment. Yeah, yeah it, it's a man metal moment. The first time you get to meet somebody who's made it in life with I mean, metal, you're at mo- a urinal. You're the most vulnerable when you're in a bath. What a wonderful Did you thing! Eye, eye contact while at the urinal. Well, I knew he was going to talk to me. I knew he wasn't going anywhere. So. But I'm saying, that's he, cool. At least you know he's not rude. At the urinal, that's a moment. Right off the bat, you know he's not rude, man. If he's willing to walk up, you know, rock it, rock it out, and take a piss and go, "Sup, dude?" While rocking a piss, yeah, I mean, that's with another that's, band. Though. He was with metal. Disturbed. Uh, I want to say it was Adrenaline Mob, an awful band. Weren't they the one that had that uh, incident this week? What was it? I believe that they had an incident this week. Didn't you hear? I was actually going to... What type of incident were we talking about? I believe that it was them. Um, it was either them or uh, someone that was in a wreck during tour, and the bass player was killed. That's unfortunate. Actually. Wow. Totally. But, like, back to the urinal. Well, then that would be him, then, because he's the bass player. No, it's a replacement. I think he just started with them this year. Uh-huh. I read something about it literally this morning. I, I I'm, I'm not trying to sound... Like, I, I I don't know what I'm talking about here. Give me one second. You've got to do some research before you start throwing stuff like that out there. I, I'm almost positive. Who would you me. say would be the, your favorite metal musician you've had the chance to meet? Uh, Warhol Band. Avatar. All the way. Okay. Yeah, I got a phone call from that meeting. So, uh, yeah, uh, actually, yep, here, excuse me real quick, not to mean to interrupt, but yeah, this week, uh, um. Yeah, the bassist David Z's death. Uh, they were uh, a tractor trailer had struck them while they were uh, pulled over to uh, change a tire. Fuck. Yeah, outside of uh, Mike and Appy, Florida. I mean, it's a definite yeah, uh, was metal a way to die. Bass player. It wasn't. We're not talking about the same guy. Are we? No, it's no. But you mentioned the, the band, church. and that's why I was bringing them up. Uh, you know, it's just you, know, you definitely, okay. uh, yeah, definitely, it's it's, it's a part somebody in the metal community. Taken from us, so it's just you know you definitely want to put your thoughts out there for them. Uh, it's, you never want to hear that stuff. You know these guys are out on tour playing for enjoyment for people. It's just it's, it's sad to hear it. But when you brought up the band, uh, it was something I meant to bring up, so I thought it was appropriate. So huh. yeah, I didn't see that. That is unfortunate. Yeah. So our thoughts are out with Adrenaline Mob right now. And um, but back to everything you were you were saying you were talking about when you met Avatar. And you gave me a really awesome yeah. phone call at work. I got a phone call at work, and here's the guitars from Avatar just on the, the Facebook live stream. There's their faces painted up talking to me. He was, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I, and I'm freaking out. I'm in the back I'm in the back at work. I tell everybody i got to step outside, and I'm outside talking to Avatar, one of the best bands I've heard in, like, the past five years. So five years old now? Like, uh, no, I don't. They, I think they've been around longer than that, but I, I haven't heard. I only heard them back uh, uh, when the album that came out before this, uh, "Hail the Apocalypse," came out. They came out in two thousand one. Yeah, they've been around a while. Yeah. Not like from Sweden, I think. Oh, they're excellent. They're excellent. Kind of based on a movie. Yeah, from Gothenburg or Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're the nicest guys I've ever met. When uh, we're uh, done with the show today, I'm definitely going to let you guys hear something. Everything I asked, I was just completely starstruck when I met them. I, I couldn't 
stop telling them that I loved them, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's even greater, so they, uh, they, they, they just did everything I was like, hey, you know, is, would you mind if I called a friend just so he can say hi to, and they're like, oh, yeah, it sounds great, you know, and they're just happy to meet me as I was to meet them, you know? Yeah, tell them, your, tell them your secret for meeting bands, how you get to meet Mushroom Head and, and Avatar and uh, hang out with all these cats. Well, the way I see it is, I guess since they're riding on tour buses, maybe they're not, there's not as many bands riding around anymore with, you know, as you would call it, riding dirty. You wouldn't think that they have a bunch of weed on the tour bus. So I think what happens is they just wait for every every stop. They know someone's going to smoke weed with them. So I think I just end up being that guy. <laughs> that guy. And uh, I, that I guy. usually always ask them, you know, hey, do you want to smoke a blunt? And they've never said no. Never said never. no. I mean, there's always somebody. Never there. said no. Uh, said every one of them, uh, no. the, the, a joint or a blunt, or they, they just, everyone wants to smoke some weed. Uh, you catch them after the show, uh, actually, the old singer of Mushroom Head that uh, he got kicked out or quit, wh whatever had happened, Waylon Revis of Mushroom Head. Uh, I was going to smoke a joint with him, but he was throwing up, and I wasn't about to share no joint with him. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty gross. But, See, he's good off uh, I ended up, smoke, ended up smoking with uh, Dr. F of Mushroom Head. And another, just an awesome guy. He, he was so nice, uh, intelligent man. I felt like a fool talking to him. That I guess he just sits on his bus and reads all day. Uh, he was nice enough, you know, to call a friend, and he actually had a five-minute conversation. You know, and just sitting there smoking a joint. He actually rolled a joint. That was another one of those times where I was so nervous. I just, I, I, I didn't know what to say, and. I, it, I couldn't even roll the damn joint, you know? How embarrassing is that? But uh, I, I smoked a hand-rolled mushroom head joint. Not many people can say that. I'm just going to give a little applause out to the Angry Gordon on that one. Great job. That's how he does this here. That's how we do it. Uh, so, and uh, I definitely appreciate that story. That is, uh, that is freaking cool. But, you know, like, again... When we come back to gimmicks and themes, man, they're one of those bands that kind of had that feel to them, you know, like you knew what you were getting into going to see them live. And uh, I think that that kind of opens up that these are obviously, you know, interesting and people who are thinkers, you know, because they're putting thought into their show, they're putting thought into their appearance and their set, their, their, their characters, however they do it. And, uh, you know, it makes them approachable. It makes them, to me, it, it, they, they may seem like out there, but to me that seems more human, man, to actually go out there and I want to entertain. I gave them more of a chance because of the whole Slipknot, like, type of um, comparison yeah. to Mushroom Head. I was like, well, shit, you know, I like Slipknot, and I've only heard that one song from Mushroom Head, so. I don't know, sure the, 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 the overall sound, though, not like Slipknot. At all. No? At all. Mm -hmm. Once you get down to it, it's, it's completely different. Even that first song that I heard riding in your car, and I was like, what is this? Let can, me have can it. You, can you give this to me <laughs> so I can imprint this in my brain? The way I see it is, if I pay you $30 to come see your concert, you better wear some crazy shit. Yeah? You know, it's... Like uh, Marilyn Manson, you know, everybody talked about, uh, I was reading something earlier this week about everybody thought it was so crazy that, I remember when they were talking about how he removed two of his ribs so he could suck his own dick. All those rumors and stuff going around. Yeah, well, ultimately proved crazy. not to be true, but I just... will pay $30 to see that guy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That guy's going to put on a show. He does put on a show, man. I saw him live, and I was very entertained. And I, I was never a huge, huge fan. I mean, I like some of it, but you know, I, 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 a lot of that stuff was metal. I, I can but, appreciate uh, his ability. I appreciate his ability. I got a counterpoint to that, though. You, you said that you know you think that when you go see him, they should dress up crazy. Is that what you said? That's that's definitely what I think. Okay, you know, all right. Uh, hold on a second. I got a counter. Man, I got a counterpoint to that. That's fucking hot. Me and you, me and you have seen Pantera. A band that metaled out so hard, probably harder than any band I've ever seen, and they were known for not having any fucking gimmicks. Remember that shit? There's no dragons popping out of the drum kit. There's no gigantic explosions at, or light shows. At the same time, at the same time, 
Could you picture going to a gore show and they're all just in regular outfits? They've done them, and I've heard people go and enjoy it. Now, me, no, I don't like it. I went to gore as a kid and got fed to that yeah, monster. No, if, I, dude, I definitely think. Like, if I was going to up, a, yeah, going going to a gore show, like, I think I would go just for the whole like theatrical aspect. And That's that, what that I'm saying. That would excite me, you know, just get, get covered in fake blood and fucking... Yeah, everything about it. I don't listen to Guar because I want to hear technical metal. No offense to Guar fans. I don't listen to them because I want to hear, you know, the hardest or fastest or craziest shit I've ever heard. I listen to it because of what the content is in it. It brings back memories. It's often hilarious. You know? It's often hilarious. It's often vulgar and obscene and just extreme and out there. And then the stage show is out of this world. And that's what I want, man. I almost want to wa- I, I want to go in there like I'm watching a heavy metal musical, a play. It's like what Metalhead's Wish Kits would have been. Yeah, and they just made it. Middle. Seen Kids Live, they played a great show yeah. because of the theatrics. Yeah, because of the yeah, theatrics. As, as, as the Again, music. Yeah, I'm I'm not a personal fan. It's not me neither. Not no. heavy. It, it it almost doesn't match their appearance. I appreciate show. what it's done for us, but exactly. Yeah. Angry with Pantera, you know, they made it very clear that <laughs> they that but we don't have dragons jumping out of the pew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do think they had a gimmick, and that gimmick was the Cowboys for Pantera. Yeah. And they were kind of known as badasses. You didn't fuck with the cowboys from hell. Damn straight. You know, and that's kind of what you paid to go see was these badass dudes playing these badass solos and these badass vocals and the badass drums. And they were just badasses. They were the cowboys from hell. That was their gimmick. Point counter. You know, they might not have been using yep. dragons jumping out of PA, but they used something. You know, they had something. They poured liquor in our face, so maybe I should take that back because they. Uh... That was there. You go. That was their <laughs> thing. Everybody has their thing, and I believe just being a badass, like oh, we go against the law. We're so cool. I think that was their thing. They were just badasses. They are badasses. And that's they are badasses. That's Pantera. All right, point counter. And now today, you have to have bands like Avatar or Amon Amarth to catch people's interest. Uh, people are so bored flipping through their phone. They just. It, I don't know. It's, it's just it, hard to keep people's interest anymore. If if it's heavy as fuck, I'm down to listen to it. And that's what it boils down to. I don't necessarily need a gimmick to draw me towards it. It just has to be hitting the aspects that I'm looking for in what I'm listening to at that point in time. You know, I, I mean, as a drummer, I like a good sound quality on the recording so that way you can actually hear it when it when it sounds like production uh, value yeah good production value. when it sounds like you know the old stuff we used to record on the four track with just like a microphone hanging up in the middle of the basement yeah, right. and that records the vocals d- drums and guitar it's like yeah I mean it, musically it could be great but I, I can't tell you know but uh yeah, as long as it's hitting certain aspects, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think you need a gimmick to, to really get yourself out there as much. And and you, Nick, when it comes to gimmick, what do you feel? What what, well, what pulls you in? I like I was worried because I think it's 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 rap core, or rap metal, or whatever. Crunk with core. It. When you say crunk core, and they're like, I don't I like that term. I think Attila is a part of crunk core, and I looked up what <laughs> crunk core actually sounds like, and I'm like, nah, fuck you, fuck that, fuck all this. This, this isn't Attila. <laughs> like I'm gonna remind you of the Outlaw CD one last time. It's a great, dude. It's a great record. I love that record. I know a lot of people might not, man, but I think it's a good album. I, I remember rocking it out for a good, good six months. Uh, just like, wow, I really like. It. I remember seeing it in the record store the first time. I went to go pick up something else, and on the cover of the album, it was like, if you like Britney Spears and 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 this and and this pop music, you will fucking hate this album by Attila. I was like, oh well, yeah, I don't like that stuff, so I might like this album. So it was like ten bucks, man. I picked it up, and I remember being very surprised at what I picked. I was like. Huh, it's kind of like, I don't know, man, that album kind of had that, that, like, southern metal feel. A lot of the guitar work and stuff in that, to me, had, had that, like, uh, kind of had that southern style. I mean, they are from, you know, they are from the south. Oh, yeah. So, but, uh, man, I really enjoyed it. Now, I admit when they went more toward the, the, the rap for stuff, I think with the later albums, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, it wasn't as good to me, personally. Some songs still hit hard, but it wasn't my thing. Yeah, but, he, uh, he does have an excellent vocal range, though. Yeah, he does. Like, he's that got guy, so many different types of, of vocals and metal vocals that he'll, he's able to, to use that, I mean... He writes clever lyrics, regardless whether they're in the range of what type of lyrics you want. I'm not a metal yeah. elitist. I, I don't like some of them, but, I mean, dude, people are buying their records, and they're touring. 
well, that I mean, that success, and what, they're doing it on their they're doing it in a way that I don't hear a lot of bands doing. So I'm not going to crap on that at all. Mm-hmm. And I like that Rage and Outlaw album, so I can't tell you I don't like them because I'd be a hypocrite. Well, I mean, whenever somebody asks me what a Tell song's about, I just say fuck you. That's what it's about, pretty much. And that's what it boils down to. It's, yeah. it's about nothing. It, they're just like up there talking shit. They're the shit. Fuck you. And it's just like, you know, I, yeah. if I'm not looking for extensive lyrical content, I can appreciate it because I'm not worried about what they're saying. As long as the vocals can match the the metal, like, uh, uh, I can't remember if it was Peter Gordon um, last week when we were talking, and it's like, th- they almost want the vocals to just be another instrument in the metal. I it doesn't want matter be, yeah. what they're saying, you know, be. it's like it has to match what they're doing. But I think that's what upsets me when I start hearing all these clean vocals to this brutal, heavy-ass metal and like it doesn't match. Totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> well, with the Tilla, it, yeah. it's every time I, I see one of their videos, it, it looks like they're just trying to take everything from modern pop culture and then make it metal, so kids can kind of like have a gateway to metal. Um, it's almost like they're they're taking all the gimmicks from pop culture and they're just like, okay, well this can be metal too. And then when they produce their videos. And shows them like you know, which with a bunch of you know chicks, they're in tattoos, they're enjoying the music. It, it gives the impression that oh yeah, there's a lot of people doing it, and there probably is. But um, I I don't really know. It, it just seems like it's more of a like come join metal kind of call. Like you know, we can be cool too, but at the same time, you, it's like you've caught my interest. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, my interest. If, if that's thing, how right, you yeah, get I mean, there, man. If that's yeah. how we yeah. get more how people, you not want to listen to it now. Uh, I'm not a fan of it, too, but that sounds great. <laughs> yeah, if you if it gets more people into the metal family, if there's more people to pick me up when I fall in a mosh pit, then like, isn't that what we want? I, I can already say I, I want to see Dirty Dirty in a mosh pit. Yeah. That's on my bucket That's list. That's I'm saying come like come to the end of that song, you probably you probably yeah, see yeah. more more tits than Tats. than you've ever Tats. seen in any concert. <laughs> Rap metal. Everybody's tried it. Machine Head tried it. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, dude. That. Look at them. That Burning Red album, man. Like you know, yeah. like remember that From This Day song? Like Machine Head. If you go back and look at the album that came out before that, the more things change. That is one of the heaviest records I've ever heard, man. Machine Head's second record, uh, they came out with uh, on a major label. The more things change, man, with like Blood of the Zodiac and Ten Ton Hammer. It's one of my favorite yeah. albums to this day. We will metal homework after this. And I will let you hear it. Right, and then you can check out the stuff on the Burning Red afterwards. And it's deceptively, man. They did that From This Day song. That's the one where they had like the uh, Message in a Bottle cover and Blood, Sweat, and the Tears. And, uh, you know, all that what stuff. What a terrible album. <clears throat> I don't think it's terrible. I just It wasn't for me, but I know a lot of people that got into Machine Head because of that, man. And Machine Head were a band that tried a different sound at one part of their career. It didn't strike with their fan base. Uh, I think that they kind of went off the map, but then they come back with that blackening, yeah. and uh, man, that album, that album, and, and, and even Unto the Locust, man, the one that was afterwards, I think they're both excellent records. I think they're absolutely tremendous, man, and if you guys haven't heard them, I highly recommend those two records. I believe that I album is 10 years old now. The Blackening? blackening. Yeah. 10 years old now. Yeah. I need to go back and do my metal research then. I still listen to it. That's the thing we're doing here, man, is metal homework. Absolutely. Uh, Admittingly, I will say that, for like I was telling them last night, for the past few years, I have hardcore, while I was, I hate to say it, Judge Metal, about uh, that uh, Avenged Sevenfold. I've never liked them. Hey, I'm on the same boat with you. Right, but check this out. Check this out. I'll say this. Now, I love Metallica. I love Slayer. I love Guns N' Roses. I like 80s stuff. I like old school stuff, man. I appreciate metal and rock and all the roots. Bon Jovi. Uh, let's not go too far. Nice. But uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, dude, I, I, I love a little bit of everything, man. Especially from from the '80s era, man. Like I think that it really helped develop in our pop culture. Well, that, that's music. that's the generation of evil. Yeah, the like that was like evil. after all the drugs and disco and shit. That's when metal was like, you know what? Fuck all of that. We want world domination now, motherfuckers. And then the little and we're pop, gonna do it little with pop big hair. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, the industry found a niche in it, and then they got bands like you know Rat and Poison and all that stuff. That was like by like the mid to late eighties. But like, I mean, even horror movies. Not to get off topic, but dude, the best horror movies came from the eighties. Uh, like I agree. that ominous like music, I just agree. the plot, the dialogue, like even the effects, like where they were, like but that's always linked like zombie movies to Slayer. Like, dude, I mean, that, that was, was that was like one of the bands that came along and just that's a solid film. I, I, I like yeah. It. 
that's the best of today's society, I think, just because that, that there's a whole different aspect of the zombies. In the first I've heard they yeah. made some Do good the, horror the films, but I, I kind of, man, I, I don't watch a lot of them yeah. anymore. Yeah, with, the, with those uh, horror movies back in the 80s, they, they had to be there. Now, with all the horror movies are just, with the cinematography, they just have you staring down a dark hall with, like, no sound for... You know, a good five solid seconds, and then they just yeah. boom real quick with a switch of screen, and something else going on. But it's nothing happening. They just I, dude, I, I that's, don't. That's all it is. They're yeah. not actually getting you with the storyline. I don't just, like it at all. Honestly, it's not. They're for putting me. you in a suspenseful type situation, and then just like throwing noise at you quickly to make you jump. And oh, like, come on. True. Let's, let's I'd rather just go to a truck stop and hang out in the dark. You know, <laughs> let's you not know? digress too far. But true. Yeah. So, uh, what were you saying? Oh, about the 80s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the 80s was, like, the the most important point of metal. I mean, everything has a history and a timeline, but that was just the, the fighting point. Because you're talking origins late 60s, yeah. early 70s, and it really grew during that time. Right. I mean, you know, Kiss was considered metal, and the yeah. were against the Knights and Satan oh, service. Yeah, they were, they were yeah. evil. Yeah. Evil yeah. as fuck. And then, like, yeah. uh, you got Black Sabbath and, and Ozzy before all that. You know, this like that was considered evil, and you listen to, like, Crazy Train... Like, dude, that that sounds, was in the eighties, man. Sounds, but in the seventies, I know yeah. they're not War pigs, band. dude. I swear, like I, I'm like we started getting into like roots and stuff. My and, favorite, you know. like just just out there, just because I can never get it out of my head. But that like end, like two minutes. See, that's of War pigs, like that riff. That the that's song the problem. On, it's society so is influencing good. the metal when the metal should be fucking influencing society. Like, get the fuck up, kick some ass. Oh, you fell down. Ooh, nobody likes you. Ooh, somebody said something. No. Fuck you. We're all going to pick you back up, yeah. and we're all going to do it together. That's what we're here. We're not about victimization. We're about empowerment. Did you I hear mean, about my trip to the concert, man? I got dropped crowd surf a bunch of times, dude, bleeding out my head and everything. Dude. I believe so, yeah. but At no time, people, everyone was just picking me up, man. Yep. They were right back on top. Get up with the metal, brother. Like, It's a happy community, That's but a part you, gotta, of the show. you just work yeah. together. Yeah. It's about togetherness, man. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, it's like going to the gym. Like Everybody's in there fucking kicking ass, but you know we're all... Well, it's kind of separate then, unless you're with some friends, but I mean... You know, everybody's staring at each other like, I can rip more than you, fuck you. Yeah, it's a glorious... Uh, <laughs> you, look, you look like a pussy, I can take your ass. You're all I, doing you, something of a common interest, you're doing it together. Yes. And the energy and if somebody and positivity needs help, with that. damn straight, I'm going to go there and yeah. help you. Yeah, yeah. man, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brotherhood, it's a very, you know... It allows you to see people as humans, rather than this, like, you know, this throwaway society that everyone's made us like... Yeah, this. nobody's taking for granted in metal. No, no, you no. Know? We appreciate each other. We really do. We it's appreciate beautiful. criticism. That uh, I love the show. Um, we can be non-judgmental, but we can definitely, you know, uh, pick apart little things to either highlight upon, and that doesn't mean necessarily that we're judging criticism's it. Criticism's good. Pointing man. out, yeah, constructive just criticism is good. Pointing out, but the, like I was bringing, like I, like I was saying, things. when it started with like the event subfold, I've never liked them. How I like that '80s metal, you know, sound. True. A friend of mine said he was like, "Well, look, you heard the first couple records and you weren't a fan. I know why you didn't like it because I've always enjoyed yeah. some of the music. I think the guitarist got a tremendous amount of talent. I've just never liked that guy's voice, like the raspiness. I just it didn't hit me right. Yeah. And they said to me, they said you need to check out the last two albums. They were like, I think they've improved, and they were like, I think it's kind of radio friendly, but I think that you'll really, really, really enjoy that yeah it well so i'm to be non-judgmental i'm gonna true. do that and i'm gonna you know have to give it my challenge own accepted i'm gonna try to find something i like in something that i typically don't and that's the whole point of it well i think i can identify with the fact that it, it infiltrated mainstream but that was not like they, they weren't fucking mean like system of a down yeah they were mean like they kept their shit true and and to the core and it just seems like avenge sevenfold the thing that i can take out of that is whether or not it was a very manly original way, or if it's just kind of like a gimmick successful way, the end goal is to still get metal out there. Like that's what I want to believe, and if if that's how it ha- has to happen, then so be it. Metal needs to be spread through the masses. I mean, I think this world would be a better place if we all could fucking fucking just go wild for a little while, and it's it's healthy. You know, instead of fucking metal tangent, and I love it. I'm gonna take a moment and call briefly though. Sure. We were talking about gimmick metal mm-hmm. before we trail off. Last week we brought up a band that some of us knew and some of us didn't, and I think that you can speak on a great deal about so very briefly. Gimmick metal. Anal cum. They were never a gimmick. You don't think they're a gimmick? They were fucking on a mission. All right. 
and they fucking succeeded. You explain this. There's no people gimmick ask me this week, what the fuck? What's no, up with anal cum? Pe- people label anal cum as a gimmick because their style is just so rabid. Like, it, it sounds like you're fucking some meth head who just found bath salts. And, oh, by the way, he's on, or he's got rabies. That's <laughs> anal cum. That's what kind of, and he's in a truck stop with, like, three other grown men. And stall, too, it's not even a handicap stall. Like, I mean, just think about it. Ah, ah, like, you know, the toilet flushing followed by sounds of don't flush it, don't flush it. I mean, code words that only men can do in truck stops. And this is what anal cunt kind of... With constant blast beats. Absolutely. With constant blast You can take the reverse of that. You can, you know, actually visualize what he's talking about. Like, you know, Hitler was a sensitive man. Here's this guy. He's in front of this fucking, like, crazy-ass military. <laughs> but, like, behind the scenes, you know, he's a non-smoker. He likes to paint. He was a vegan. If he was alive today, his favorite bands would be Depeche Mode, Dismiss, and The Cure. I mean, look at Hitler. He's like, you know, fucking emo kid. A little, little sissy. I've and he seen that meme the, emo world. the original emo kid yeah. where he's got, like, the hair and the eye. So oh, tragic. Nice. Yeah, hey, but they really like it. Yeah, they're so not a gimmick man at all. That's no, because somebody no. told me they said, "Oh, that was their gimmick," and I kind of even nope. thought I said, well, nope. "Maybe, nope, kinda, nope. That, not at all." Say that's their gimmick, but at the same time, like just because a certain aspect of what they do is what catches on to people, that doesn't mean that they started the band as a gimmick. Well, uh, that's just true. that's just the niche that has made them successful, and I think that is just his whole attitude towards how he makes his music. Solid. Which, uh, it's, you can't blame him for it. That's how he does it. Would you want it any other way? No. No. I don't think I would. What was that one group that was like an acoustic version? It was something like... Oh, moon, Impaled, impaled in, uh, Northern Moon Force. Impaled no, I was That like, is by far, gentlemen, that is by far the greatest band that has ever existed. Impaled... What? Impaled, impaled Northern, Northern moon, moon Force. Just look up the Necro Wizard. It's a little YouTube video. Okay. It's like All a right, minute and well, 60 seconds long. I mean, Metal fucking C- CGI, uh, you know, great studio quality. You watch this video and you understand that you don't need any of that to fucking rule everything. Yeah, he, it's just vocals. The drums are like done with the feet tapping and slapping. Blast beats like hitting the legs. Yeah. Dude, the live shows were the best. Like, I, I saw Anal Cunt play twice, once in Northern Virginia. Oh, they, got, they got cut off in five minutes. Because uh, they pissed off some other band because it took too long to set up. And then uh, I saw them down in Charlotte, and that was great. I actually sat down with Seth Putnam and bought him a mixed drink. And uh, that was a great thing. Was uh, he incredibly mean? Oh, yeah, he was. Dude, when I, when I first got there, I was like, yo, Seth, man, I'm rooting for you tonight. He just looks at me and goes, yay. Like, you little bitch. Like, like who are you? Make note that his fuck. face made that, like, scrunched up, like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, like, and what's look on the face when he did it. I went up there to buy a vinyl He might as well be doing jazz hands while he did the shit. Yeah, yeah, he really did. He walked by as if, like, I didn't even need to exist. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah, so, anyways, I buy, I buy the, uh, their little record, and I buy uh, one of their t-shirts. He takes the record out of my hand and takes, like, a pill vial out and crushes pills up on the vinyl, sniffs it, and gives it back to me. And then the poster I got with that album, uh, I'm like, hey, man, can I get him to autograph it? Like, she was like the concession stand chick. And she was like, Seth, come here and sign this fan ball uh, a vinyl, which there was, you know, hard to sell. That's why they're giving out free posters. Yeah. So he writes in there, he puts a couple squiggly marks and says, fuck off, you. That thing is in case right now in my house. And <laughs> it's probably the most valuable possession I ever had because they have a story with it. It was authentic. It was manly. Nothing was preplanned. It was just fucking there. And that was probably the the greatest metal experiences of my life. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. that should just reaffirm that you know, anal cunts nothing to fuck with, and, well, you're, uh, and you're welcome. What was that there, Angry? You said something. Oh, I was gonna say, it sounds like you got it signed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds yeah. authentic. No, they <laughs> definitely fucking authentic. They they were like two generations like ahead of the curve. If I mean, anybody listening has never heard of anal cunt or Seth Putnam. You probably won't like the music. You're but fucking you definitely up. might should check out the interviews and stuff with this man because it is absolute chaos. I'm gonna have to do that. Because I, I would. I highly gonna, encourage. I don't know, like <laughs> Look up him on uh, him talking about Corpse Grinder Fisher, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah he did not much like that guy. My no. whole experience with, with <laughs> they were song initially about it. was sitting there watching watching <laughs> like a guy beat you up and, and, ran away. and Mr. Taylor walking through the fucking <laughs> back of the kitchen banging pots. Screaming anal cunt lyrics, and it's just like, yes, the staff like, was as, and as shit as the night was. This just like, and that, oh. and, and and that that that's uh, the gentleman you're talking about. That's just it, man. He's not a huge metal guy. He's not. But dude, like you know, like like that's why things well, like that kind of led me to think of uh, gimmicks, gimmicks, gimmicks. You know, but 
I don't think, yeah, like, I guess after hearing uh, 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 Sir here, Mr. Carl, he, you know. Guthrie. Yeah, so. it, it, it makes sense. That's not a gimmick, yeah. That, that uh, To me, that doesn't sound like one, like. Not see, it's just, to me, it's almost hard to determine what a gimmick or a theme is. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. I almost believe that when people start calling it gimmick metal, it's almost just based on opinion. I, I you know, well, I don't know. But then there's they're so they're set, they're set ones that aren't like, dude. Look at Alestorm. I mean, that's five albums of pure pirate themed pirate lyrics. It's got the keytar playing. I, I mean, if you maybe, listen to it, man, maybe it's like, he was he was born as a pirate in, in a previous life, and it, it's not a. Gimmick you would to think him. so. You would you know, think so. Maybe maybe he just wanted to be a pirate. Oh, I gotta check these guys out. out. Yeah. Oh, dude, That's yeah. kind of the way I've always thought about yeah. it. Yeah, we'll check it out after this, man. I got a couple great tracks that I love, Please. man. Uh, Magnetic North, uh, The Battle of Cartagena, uh, right. um, Fucked with an Anchor. Like, I mean, they're just some great songs that are just are they they're, anything they're like fun. They got the gang vocals, man. Right. They got that kind of punkish influence, but it's still heavy. It's got great leads, and it's you know it's it's fun. It's fun. When That's I the, what I love about it, man. Right. I have a good time listening to it. When I hear like the circus element, I immediately think something like uh, Dog Fashion Disco or Polka Dot. Man, we have not mentioned on here, dude. I love, I love Dog Fashion, dude. Did you, have you heard the last couple records? Did you they just ad nauseum? Man, I, I've been. This is where my metal homework has been to, to foot. I've been listening to a lot of uh, Dog Fashion Disco on the regular. And I'm learning about all these albums because all I had was the, I think it was the Anarchist Cookbook or Anarchist something. I don't know. It was Anarchist. Oh. Excuse wow. me. That, that's that's very blasphemous. I'm, no, no, no. I'm drawing a blank on it, too, and I got it right here on my phone. Let's go ahead and just get it correct so people I think it's like Anarchist of Good Taste yeah. or something. To add I, see I see it. I see it. Excuse me. Record. Excuse me. Didn't mean to get off track. But when I... My apologies. When I remember these guys, when I first heard them, it was like, okay, if... Marilyn Manson and Nine Inch Nails were what I thought they were. This is what it would sound like when I had never heard of it. I just saw them on TV. Like, oh, okay, that's. I need to go listen to their music. But well, a little heavier. Yeah, I mean, but a little heavier. I, I respect to both those guys as artists. Um, in my judgment, non-judgmental uh, lifespan, <laughs> I've come to appreciate them and give Ooh. them the, the respect that they so do deserve. I mean, they're brilliant artists. It was just never, never my cup of tea. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just dog fashion disco just seemed to have more of like a, I don't know. Even if you could take, like, I don't know, Deftones and Tool and, I don't know, some weird carnival band that's got, like, a didgeridoo, well, that's kind of them. And uh, it's great. That's accurate. I'll, you know, I'm going to see if him. If you want to go to the carnival, it's... go check out Avatar. Okay. Yeah. Man, Avatar, yeah, well, we are going to check some out here after the showtime. Most definitely. Challenge oh. accepted. Wonderful, wonderful. Greatest thing I've heard in a long time. So you would think that if you had to think of a ga- band that uh, that... Defined gimmick or theme for you? You think Avatar would be your one there? Angry? It would be the one that you would you would definitely shoot for, and you would you would recommend to others. You need to check out Avatar now. What albums? What songs would you go for right off the bat? And all of them is not uh, an answer. Uh, I'm taking notes. Uh, I'm going to say that everybody's going to like Hail the Apocalypse. I'm going to agree with that. If you don't like Hail the Apocalypse, you you're probably just not a fan of metal. That's wow. That's a heavy challenge. Okay, that's that's gonna be metal. Homer You're probably just not a fan of metal if you can't get down with this song. What was the name of the song? Uh, Hail, the the Hail the Apocalypse. Believe me, I will remember. I got it right here on the phone. Um, that's a good one too. And uh, my honorable mentions on that, I'm gonna say Bloody Angel, House of Eternal Hunt. I just say go listen to all of Avatar and be happy. Just go buy all their albums. <laughs> yeah, just, one. just do it right Maybe now. I like the sound of confidence. Don't argue with it. it I, I know you're going to love them. All right. If you don't love them, we probably wouldn't be real life friends. So. We heard that his anger would succumb us. So, All right, when it comes to gimmick for you, man, like well, anything that speaks to mind there, Carl? Uh, I don't. I mean, if, if we're going to the original meaning of gimmick, I, I'll just go with war. Yeah, I mean, when they went back to their metal roots, like that—that that really just—I mean, oh, don't you wrong? It's like it's gone beyond hate this time. Like <laughs> statements like that are very profound. And when you're, you know, listening to music to have a good time, and then you hear like, oh, what what a divine way of explaining yesterday while I was at work, yeah, and then right, yeah. like, hell yeah, well let's let's relive this, and hopefully our lives will 
be a lot worse off because of it. And thank you, sir. Fun note on uh, <laughs> guitar. We have a, a friend of the show who's uh, actually a uh, cousin is one of the guitarists. Mm. So something to maybe bring up at a later well, time. Well, me so. and him need to touch tips sometimes because uh, yeah. I'm right. that excited right now. We'll let you cross, yeah. we'll let you cross swords. We'll, we'll have trouble. Right All there. right. So, so if it comes to you, uh, right, man, Nick, man. when it comes to themes... What are you thinking? You saw how many questions I had, and I had a bunch of questionable topics. Like, what, about, what about Duck Clock? Is that a theme? I would Duck definitely say animated that's animated a gimmick, animated because animated it's just, animated isn't animated it an animated, animated, animated screen when they play live? I, I just think it's, sure. that's what I've always heard. I, 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 I almost I, believe it would have to, because a friend of mine of the, said. Um, the, the, the whole first album, they didn't have a bassist, so it was one man doing the, the vocals, the guitar, and the bass. And the, yeah, I think he had just one guy coming for drums. I'll have to update. You know, the, I'll so. update the Facebook on it. But um, um, I believe I had a friend just in case we we confirm that. But I had a friend who said he's seen them, and I believe he said, "Yeah, the band plays behind like a screen with like the animated band members playing it in would, their it place." It would almost make sense. Like, I would it, think like, so. Uh, if you went to go gorillas, see Death Clock, yeah, like Gorillas, did didn't they do something similar? That's what I believe. That's exactly what he said. I just don't want to quote him on it and not be one hundred percent. But I believe that's what he what True. he told me. So I mean, I feel like if I would you definitely say that's a, that's a gimmick. Clock and you, all you've ever seen was Metalocalypse the show, and then all of a sudden you just went up there and what is it? Um, Brandon Smalls. Yeah. Uh, oh Lord, does, man! I, I can't remember all the band. I mean, uh, no, it's, yeah, yeah. I, no, I think he's just like the the one man that. Yeah, like the guy who created it wrote the music and played it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, uh, he's a talented dude, but um. He, and uh, that metal wasn't phoning it in. Well, they yeah, had some yeah. killer jams and really, it really was. Really understand it if you just see this one guy coming up and doing the metal, the the death clock stuff. You know, I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> Where's name's an explosion? What was it? Like, big old, you know, But as far black. as, like, gimmicks and whatnot, though, like, I didn't know what we were talking about, but I think if we're talking about recommended shit that I've listened to lately, sure, yeah. it had to be the new body count stuff, because I just let Leo in on it last night. And I was checking that out, too. About it, Dude, no I had no matter, idea. Like, I didn't know that that was that was like an ongoing thing. Like they've been doing it this whole time. Like I didn't. know. I think I they split up for a long time. I think he just got back with them. Yeah, I think they did because we were watching a newer video and they were talking about oh, body counts back, you know. But uh, at the same time, I didn't know how long was the split up for. I, I think it was for you know nigh on fifteen twenty years. I think they did their album like oh, a, so they just th- one earlier. Album I think they, they did like maybe back. one or two earlier records and then they just come back. I remember hearing a couple of their early stuff for a few years. No. But I mean that's cool, man. That's a guy who's predominantly known for for hip hop right. coming out and doing doing a metal album you know and, and regardless whether you don't like it or not that's metal man I, I was telling I was telling both these gentlemen yesterday it's got a message to it I mean whether you disagree yeah. or agree with it it's got a message to yeah. it and he comes out of the gate letting you know exactly what it is man and he's man. still he's he's taking his talents with the with the rap and the hip hop and and incorporating into that man and some of those choruses are catchy and it, you know, there's some like songwriting the chops. Song. I mean, there's no no point in crapping on it. It's it's a solid record, and if you haven't checked it out and you, you got an open mind, I definitely recommend it. It's a lot heavier than I was yeah. expecting. I'll, 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 you're a metal I'll guy, dude. You love gent, and you love hardcore stuff, and you heard the body count and went, whoa. That's, Especially that's the song with Max Cavalera, man. That was, that was a groovy little... Yeah. Little patch of metal Soulfly in there. Soulfly is playing the entire Nail Bomb album right up the road from us, oh. coming up in a few months, and uh, that's something I think that as the non-judge metal crew, we need to try to attend. Uh, if you guys yeah. haven't seen Soulfly or Max Cavalera live, it's a treat. Yeah. No, it's it not needs cannibal to corpse. It's no, an abyss corpse. This would actually be blasphemous. It's the weed cannib- cannibal corpse, though. It's like death metal, but it's all about weed. It's cannabis corpse. Oh yeah, yeah. That's who's playing. Dude, with Soulfly. No way. Yeah, Cannabis Corpse and Soulfly you know I mean? doing the first Nail Bomb album. If we don't go to see this show, we all have to cut our nuts off. Is that gimmick? Uh, cannabis Corpse? Cannabis Corpse, I definitely would say would be gimmick. It's a weed death metal. It's a I death metal band. It's, it's, I don't know if it's so much a gimmick because they don't fall into the, the stoner All right, well, then metal. they fall into theme because... They, they definitely are. Yeah. stoner metal because as uh, he was, uh, you know, the, the Reverend was talking about last week with uh, all this. I listened to the stoner metal, not the same. Not all. Oh, no, it's definitely interesting. Not if you think about it and listen to it real in depth, it's a lot of the same music we're listening to now at half the speed. This is death metal with weed theme lyrics, so I would say yeah. it's, it's, it's all cannibal it's corpse songs. It's, it's just its theme is is marijuana. That's well, why they call well, it cannabis I, corpse. I it's can, all cannibal corpse songs. Yeah, it's metal. cannibal corpse songs. It's like covered. They just almost, talk about weed, but with weed lyrics. And it's that's their gimmick. Yeah, it's that's their theme. Their theme, right? Or what is it? Experimental. I
So when, when it comes Ooh, to this, is this stoner metal though? Is that how yeah, it, like it has down it? and uh, down. No, down would like, not. Oh, down. I'm talking about you don't like stoner metal. Think think sleep, sleep, <sighs> sleep and ohm. Uh, Maybe I'm just not yeah, up to par. Dude, yeah, they like but sleep is. Hey man, I, yeah. You see this guy sometimes with metal homework. No, I'm, I've, I've been every time I, I'll run into him at work and I'll be like, check this out. Do it. Tone. Or uh, what is it, uh, Hill Jarda? Yeah. I, I tried to find the, there's a couple pronunciations, but yeah, I think the actual pronunciation is, uh, or Bill Jarda. Right. Well, before we wrap up, you, uh, when it comes to you there, Leo, gimmicks, themes, what are you, what are you, what are you into? Well, uh, I've got a couple, um, that have kind of, uh, grown on me, like a tumor. You know, they're there and they, they get a little bit bigger as time goes on, but, uh, you know the the, the Kawhi metal, no, ever ever baby metal does that? Did yeah, baby metal. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. They fall into that whole subgenre of, of the Kawhi. Uh, evidently, it's a I enjoy that for many reasons. It's it's playing. when I first heard it, you know, like obviously because you know I don't like clean vocals with uh, with like serious serious heavy metal. But I love the production of their stage yeah, show. The, though, man, the, the that's it's so show, entertaining. And just the what with what they're doing. Bring metal to a whole different audience with with how that how that is like I can I can appreciate it and I won't lie like I, I heard it and I I was like oh I don't know how I feel about this like it just gave me a, a funny funny and feeling my keyboards st- man you know it it, it's, time. well dude it's heavy as fuck like the metal itself is fucking yeah. heavy you know when they're just going at it and I love it. You know, it's a, I, I find myself like listening to it and making other people listen to it. Uh, you you got I mean everybody's got to have something man that pulls them into it. Just like last week, I mean you talk about the sounds, but uh, but yeah, you know like you know, an- another one though, and I know all y'all are hating on it, um, but Ghost Bath. Um, I, I would say that's gimmicky with with the vocals. I just, it, yeah, I just don't like the, the vocals come from like that whole different subgenre. I can't remember the actual name <laughs> of that pain, genre, pain. like pain metal or, or something like that. But I can't listen to Ghost Bath and not have just a huge smile on my face. Like as as bad as those vocals are, like it brightens my fucking day. <laughs> angry. Yeah, dude, like, angry, angry, angry. I know angry, exactly angry. what you're talking yeah, about yeah, now. Like, every every single uh, time I play uh, it, like even people that hate <laughs> metal and are listening to it, like even they're sitting there geeking out, like, is this a real thing? Yeah. And, and just, are they serious? Oh, hold on. And it's and it's not just the, the, the one song I heard I heard like one song and I was like, Alright, maybe oh. maybe it's just one song but the, No, I, I listen to more album. It's, I, real Constant. quick Angry, have you heard of Ghost Bath? Ghost Bath? Yes, Ghost Bath, like bathe, like bathe yourself and wash the sound of Ghost Bath off of you. Have you heard them? No, I Never heard of it. I'm that. being a little John Judge Metal, and I hate to do it, but uh, what's that song that you let me hear the first time? I, I can't remember the name of the song right off the bat. I, I'll bring it up in a later episode after I've researched it. We will send it. you a link, man. Like <laughs> the, you got to hear it. It sounds so good, but then the vocals kick, and it's kind of like, like at first, it's like is it, to me personally, I was like. They they done got me. This is a joke. Somebody done wrote this. <laughs> and this is some hilarious ploy to make me hate metal from now on, and I don't want to do it. So, uh, but uh, I, I'm playing that's, obviously. That's but honestly, you got to hear this. That's, he described it the that's best way. Slayer to me. No, listen, hold on. No, it's not Slayer. Trust me. No. Listen, yeah, listen. I, I've never been a fan of Slayer's lyrics. Well, that that's r- no, no. There's you, no lyrics to hate. You don't understand. You're not hearing me. We're gonna send you a link of it. The best way to describe it, do you remember, Will, uh, 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 my friend Will explained it to me one time really well, is that, uh, he had heard it too and he said that, you ever seen that internet video of the goat screaming, the, ah! Taylor Swift songs and such. You remember that? Like that YouTube video yeah, of that yeah, goat yeah, screaming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Ghost Bath is like metal, but with that goat screaming in the background the whole time. Yes, yeah, so you need to check it out. Yeah, you need to listen to it just so you understand exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like, oh, I don't like the content of the lyrics. I don't understand why there's a goat screaming in the back of this like, metal the like, whole time. Like, seriously, picture somebody just bored and going on YouTube and making, like, taking some, like, late 80s power riffs and then mixing that goat mm. into it for the vocals, and they've created a band and got signed. Yeah. We're going to send you a thing. What We're all being. Called? 
Ghost Bad. This be called Fleetwood Mac Metal. <laughs> Uh, nah, you no. know, like I said, you, you gotta, uh, you gotta experience it for yourself. See, we're we're it explaining it, and he it, still can't comprehend the sound. It, I can't second, wait till he hears it. Give it a second and tell me if you just don't have a smile on your face listening to it. I think it, it's it, gonna make him more it angry. Makes, it makes me happy. I think yeah. it's gonna make him more angry. But but it's it's like you know one of those bands <laughs> that, that I've definitely you know it's it's grown on me. I, when I first heard it, it's one of those like is is this real? Is this is this where metal is going? Too late. Absolutely. He's got a playlist on YouTube, Leo's Gent Studies. He's going to apply Ghost Bath to it. We will apply to it. Fucking Ghost Bath. <laughs> yes. well, let's find out that. We'll find out. You, all, you guys can check bath. out our different we'll playlists and out. see. And we're going to get Angry Gordon's pick on there, too. Uh, Angry, before I go into what I love about the gimmick things, and we end, uh, we wrap up here, I gotta ask you. You said something earlier to me. Did you want to explain what the Angry Gordon is? Because I don't. I don't want people thinking that you're full of rage all the time. I do. Oh, it's nothing to do with anger at all. It's uh, <laughs> completely sexual. Thank you. Yeah, it's a it's a sex, sex position, and uh, we'll leave it at it's that really for a sexual now. Position. We'll leave it at that for now. You gotta okay. my book to find out what it is. Yeah. Read the book. Read the book. So we'll. Oh, We'll Good get to that later. Can I give a band shout out for this week? You absolutely can give a band okay. shout out. Okay, you guys need to check this out. I just found out about them today because of today. Uh, the band's name is Eat the Turnbuckle. The Turnbuckle. Eat the they, Turnbuckle. They're, what is it? they're beating the shit out of each other. Like it's like backyard wrestling, but with barbed wire, <laughs> and they are really <coughs> fucking each other up. Excuse me. And they're playing like this hardcore metal, like the the genre hardcore, but it's like with metal involved. So. It's fun. I, I saw a video and I'm already hooked. So that's that's my little wait, shout wait, out. Wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you talking about wrestling theme metal? Yeah, this is like okay. Yeah, with well, the theme. You, you got me at wrestling. Yeah, when well, you got me at metal. It's yeah. just their approach. Like they love. Apparently, it looks like they love to wrestle, and they've incorporated that into the metal that they choose to write. And it looks badass. It looks like uh, I need to go see a show sometime. Someone can insert that clip now of like uh, John Riley and Will Ferrell going. Did we just become best friends? Uh, I, that, that, I think one yeah. of their songs DDT or not, because if it's oh, DDT, yeah, if I, you don't know what a DDT is. You know, they probably yeah, find, do, find a track list while I uh, and I'll um I'll wrap up here. When it comes to like the gimmick stuff for me, man, like I said earlier, I love the theatrical. I like a big stage show. I like a lyrical <laughs> content. Okay, I, I love a concept album. I love a concept album more than anything, man. Anything that tells a story. As I'm a huge fan of it, but if Devin I'm going to give Devin Townsend for one, if I'm going to give a shout out this week to albums that I think that people should check out, uh, Necro Goblicon's 2015's Heavy Meta, uh, that is an absolutely great record from start to finish, man. It is just a, a good time. Um, uh, previous album they put out, Stench and their EP, excellent too. Uh, and of course, anything by Ailstorm, I'm a big fan of. Like anything that's that that's big and themed, and they play around with. And of course, Amon and Marth, we discussed it last week. Uh, you just when you put thought into it, and there's that 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 laid out plan of of you know you're going to go out there and not only put on a show and and play your instruments, which has already got you you know people lined up in the crowd, but you're going to take the extra effort to really give them something special for showing up to watch you live, man. That means a lot to me, and that's why I want to see Avatar, like he said. I'm a huge fan of theirs, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm big on getting to catch that 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 stage show because. Uh, you know, with the effort there, I think it really just builds to what I've been talking about the whole time, man, the community of it all. The community of it all. You get to go and you get to spend time with like-minded individuals who enjoy the same things as you. And uh, when there's when there's a little bit extra to it, man, it, there's no harm in that, man. A little sugar and spice and everything nice. Absolutely. Real metal is warfare. Absolute. And you found something here? Yes, sir. I uh, actually found a couple songs by Eat the Turnbuckle. Uh, <laughs> False Count Anywhere. Death from above. Card subject to change. Wait, hold on. Go back to that. That's card subject to carnage. That's a play on card subject to change. Well, then I just spoke blasphemy. Yeah, that's card subject to carnage. Yeah, so we're going to check out wrestling theme metal. That's now our wrestling homework is to try to find as many gimmick bands as we can and just see <coughs> hey, what, 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 what sticks. Maybe, maybe we should just go for Brutal. Dude, I always go for brutal. You always, always brutal. Always go if, for like, brutal. If you find a brutal band, yeah, definitely you can. Like we've all got our own separate playlists. You can always hit one of us up and let somebody mm -hmm. know. We can go on YouTube. We can pop that band on the playlist. I've got plenty 
in my memory cap. And if anybody Always. who hears us, man, disagrees with something and wants us to check out and give us metal homework, I'm more willing to take any challenges. Right. I will accept it. Hit it up in the comments. Yeah. Do, we, do we have comments? Yeah. We got comments on each and every video, and then we got like an actual message button link on the Facebook page. Comment on I want to hear new things. I want to yeah, hear new exactly. things. That's I mean that's what's important. That's the whole point of trying to be non-judgmental. Sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes you hear something, you absolutely get mad. I mean, you don't want to judge anything or name anything out right that right out ghost bath, but you know sometimes it's just really hard not to not to dislike something. You don't have to like it. You just can't take away from them being metal. I've hated on that AX7 or whatever for like ten years, man. And somebody told me they were like, I think with the type of music you like and how. You appreciate kind of radio metal and stuff that's poppy with a good chorus. Don't they were like, general. you know, well, I mean, that's not like my, my niche. I don't go to that automatically, but I do appreciate it, and I like something that's catchy, man. I like, you know, I like big production. And somebody told me they were like, dude, those last two albums to me kind of felt like the best of like a combination of Metallica, Slayer, and Guns N' Roses. Like you rolled them into one, and they were like, oh, it's good. They were like, I think you'd like it, and I think that as a band, they've grown to where you would appreciate that music. They were like, and you're walking around talking about you don't really like them, and they're not your sound, but you only listen to the first two or three records, and then you just haven't touched anything since. And I'm like, well, you're absolutely right, and that makes me, you know, that makes me absolutely judgmental. Everything I touch from volumes, I like it. I'm glad. I thought I, I thought the volumes would be something that would stick That's with you. Amazing. Periphery is another one I think that you yeah. would like everything they put out too. I, I've actually <clears throat> went and uh, found a little list of my own. Ooh. Studies. Yeah, yeah I, I, I did my studies. Uh, we've got a few ones to check out. Okay. Some, some of them on the heavier side, pretty much uh, just the one we mentioned earlier, the Viljarda. In case you're wondering the spelling, it's V I L D H J A R T A. But uh, Periphery was <laughs> on there. Um, veil of Maya. That, I've always liked everything I've good. heard from them. I just haven't pursued them consistently. You know, so that's maybe, that, maybe it's time you know, to jump in. To check out all, uh, Cloud Kicker. Uh, instrumental from what I listened to, there was a lot of albums on there. So maybe they've gotten vocals. I, I believe they, they might. But also... Uh, the Contortionist and Monuments. I'm also. going to see The Contortionist in October with Between the Buried and Me. Ah, uh, the last that, album they put out. Good. The last album they put out is excellent, man. I will give you guys a copy of that. That is, I'll leave a copy here for you guys to listen to. It Definitely. Is, I mean, I, I went in and I checked them out. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been I bet. enjoyable thus far. I bet you would. Yeah, I feel like you would like The Contortionist. Oh, a lot of the uh, the non-American. Um, Gent that I've been finding has has been more appealing. You know, I, I think we might have mentioned it, like the Andre Casagrande and uh, and Vitalism. I think we did, um, yeah. Yeah, those those I'm I'm definitely a big part of. So. But uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up for now. Absolutely, we we'll appreciate you guys coming in, Carl Guthrie. Uh, wonderful having you here, Angry Gordon. Good to be here. Good to be here. Avatar. Yes, yeah, we will Avatar. all check out Avatar, man. We appreciate Avatar. you coming back to Avatar. Check out Wolfhard, just to let you know. Yeah, we all listen to the Wolfhard. And, That's uh, good stuff. Reviews That's are good. good. Reviews are good. I'm not going to tell you I listen to any shit. 